Deutéronome chapter 2, verses 12 to 17. First John 2, are we all there, church? Verse 12. I write to you, little children, because your sins are forgiven you for his name's sake. I write to you, fathers, because you've, you've known him who is from the beginning. I write to you, young men, because you have overcome the wicked one. I write to you, little children, because you've known the Father. I've written to you, fathers, because you have known him with from the beginning. I've written to you, young men, because you are strong and the word of God abides in you. And you have overcome the wicked one. Verse 15. Do not love the world or the things in the world. If anyone loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life is not of the Father but is of the world. And the world is passing away and the last of it. But he who does the will of God abides forever. This morning I continue what I began last week. Spiritual levels in the church. Spiritual levels in the church. And by way of introduction, John wrote this letter. John the Apostle wrote this letter to the churches because something was happening. And he was inspired to write this letter to counsel, encourage, empower the children of God. Children of God. Because among the children of God, we have little children. Not by virtue of age. Children here, like we heard last week, are the new converts. Those who are new in the faith. They are like newborn babies. It doesn't matter how old you are. It doesn't matter what your position in society is. Once you are new in the faith, a new convert, you are a little child. Little children must grow. You must grow. And the way, the only way you can grow is by the word of God, which is described as pure milk. Pure milk. The Bible calls the word of God pure milk, which you must drink as a child before you can grow. In the church also, we have young men who have passed the level of new converts. They are young and strong. And they face their own kind of challenges. They have to overcome the wicked one. They are particularly targeted by the wicked one. They must overcome the wicked one. These are the ones who have been in the church, been Christian for some time, they progress. They've learned a lot. But the enemy targets them. They have to overcome. The fathers are those who have known God from the beginning. They've known God from the beginning. From for many years they have known God. They've been able to persist, endure, persevere. They have become mature. They need to teach. 
the little children and the young men. They need to encourage and to inspire. Why did John write this letter? Because at this time, the church in Jerusalem has faced a lot of persecution. Jerusalem itself has been conquered, destroyed, and the Christians are scattered all over the world. In the same way, as though we are gathered here this morning, we come from all over the city of Accra and Tema. We don't all come from, we don't all come from one, one house, or one, even one location, one, one, one neighborhood. We come from different places in Accra and Tema. And there are some who are with us now who are in different parts of the world. Different parts of the world. And our brethren and our branches, Michel Kam, Teshin, Nibwe Town, Ashaman, different places. And you may be the only Christian in that place where you are. I'm not there with you. Elder is not there with you. Pastor is not there with you. You are the only one there. Therefore, we have been scattered in the same way as the Christians, the believers were scattered in the days of John. Why God inspired John to write this letter? They needed to be encouraged. Because something was happening. Because of their being scattered, they were not able to have fellowship. They were denied the proper fellowship that they were used to having in Jerusalem. They didn't have it anymore. They were faced with challenges from the world. Many of them were conforming to the standards of the world. They were growing cold. Just as many of us keep growing cold. And therefore, conforming to the world. Instead of being transformed, continue to be transformed into the image of Christ, they were being not becoming conformed to the world. They were adopting and practicing worldly standards. That is happening in most churches now. We take things from our neighborhood, from where we live, we see, when we go to work, we see our office mates, we see what they are doing, and we begin to copy them under the name of, of fashion, the name of whatever, and this is what was happening. It's, it didn't start now. It has started years ago, centuries ago. Many of them were even forsaking the assembling of ourselves together. Busy elsewhere. Busy with work. Busy with social obligations. Busy with other things except the assembling together of ourselves. We are busy with everything except when there is nothing to do and you think of coming before the, into the house of God. Many were living in sin. Following after the people around them, they were living in sin. Living in sin. Worst of all, they were being bombarded. Being bombarded by false teachers. False doctrine. Wrong, erroneous teachings. When they were in Jerusalem, where the apostles were, they were receiving the apostles' doctrine. Now, they are scattered all over. And who do they have? False prophets, false apostles, false evangelists, false bishops, senior bishops, archbishops, popes, senior popes, in all kinds of robes, giving to them false teachings, false things that they didn't receive from the apostles. And God could see that his children were getting lost. So John wrote the letter to address each and everybody, doesn't matter what your spiritual level is, this letter was addressed to you and addressed to me. It does not matter 
whether you're a little child, you're a young man, or you're a father. This letter is addressing you. Because we don't live in a commune. When I was a little child, um, growing up in Kumeru, my village, there was a place that uh, there was a church called GDA, GDA. And what they did was they had isolated themselves from the rest of the world. You see, they all lived in that, in, in a, in a, in a, so I don't, so I know what they, 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 that's not how you do it. They, they all lived in one place. So they were cut off. And they, no, they, do, they, they hardly came out. You never saw them in the town. Nobody ever went there. They lived there. They had their own farm, their own shops, everything. So they would not sin. That is not how you prevent sin. Hello? Hello? So this is the backdrop, the background of this letter. And so John wrote to them, reminding them that they should not forget. Yeah, and do not forget that your sins have been forgiven you for Christ's sake. One day, one day, I believe that you will get to understand what this means. The, 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 the value of what John is saying here. Your sins have been forgiven you. Your sins have been forgiven you. Don't forget that. And in case you don't appreciate it, think of what Christ went through to obtain that for you, to obtain that forgiveness of sins. His own blood pierced in the feet, hands, and in the side. Hung on a cross, died, buried. You and I have not died yet. And he promised us everlasting life. Don't forget that you have already overcome the wicked one. You have overcome the wicked one. Therefore, don't go back to the wicked one. Don't go back, put yourself under the wicked one. If you're a young man, you have overcome the wicked one. The wicked one is afraid of you. You are putting that, you put your foot on his neck. So how do you go back and now put yourself under the wicked one? He will devour you. He will tear you into shreds. He will make men's meat of you. And if you are a father, you think you are mature, take heed lest you fall. If you think you are standing, father, you know it all. Take heed. Don't forget your first love. Go back to your first love. Don't grow cold. Don't grow weary. Don't get tired. The thing that you used to do that brought you to the level of maturity, begin to do them again and again. Continue. Because it is he who endures to the end who will be saved. Not he who began and didn't finish. He who endures, perseveres to the end, is the one that we saved. So Paul, sorry, so John, having written all this to remind them now, goes on to say in verses 15 to 17, the world in which you are, this world in which you are, do not love the world. Do, don't love it. Or the things in the world. Because if anyone loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. It's not in him. Friendship with the world is enmity with God. Friendship with the world means enmity with God. Why? Because Remember that the world that you love, all that is in it, there's nothing in the world except the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life. This is what is in the world. And these are not of the Father, but of the world. 
and the world is passing away and the last of it but he or she the one the one who abides the one who does the will of god is the one who will live forever the world will pass away but the one who does the will of god he is the one who will be left standing and may you all be left standing Amen. may you be left all standing touching may you all be left standing in the name of jesus Clap your hand for Jesus. Now, love of the world is seen in external behavior. In behavior. Lust of the world. Sorry, love of the world. Love of the world. Which John is writing to advise us. 2,000 years ago, he wrote, this letter is still for us and for our children is seen in external behavior your behavior is what should tell you you yourself not not the third person you yourself i myself that i love the world that you love the world it is your behavior your external behavior it is not your thoughts not what is inside we're coming to that but your external behavior is what should tell you yourself that you love the world. And when we talk of external behavior, we're thinking of what we're talking about. The people we associate with, listen carefully, the people you associate with, we said it over and over and over again. Those that you associate with, those that you make friends with. I prepared this message two or three weeks ago. So don't, if it's hitting you, then it's God talking to you. Not because of you, I'm preaching this message. I preached it before. And it's God talking to you. There are people you move with. There are people you associate with. There are people you socialize with. You may call friends or partners you regularly. If they are sinners, if they are sinners, it's a sign that should tell you that you love the world. You know that this person is a sinner, and yet you associate with her, associate with him. You love the world. Places you go to where sins are committed. If you love going to places where sins are committed, you are in love with the world. Not only do you love the world, you are, in fact, you are in love with the world. Listen carefully. And the activities you enjoy, things you enjoy, sin. If you enjoy sin, you love sin. You love the world. It's interesting that even amongst our children, when you have, if you have two or three children, children who are young, you, you agree with me, they all have their preferences. There are some who love bread, they like bread. Some who can't stand, you wonder, are these not two, not my children? Same father, same mother, but some will love bread, some don't like bread. One would like Banku, the other one isn't Banku at all. Contumere. When I, isn't it when I take when I take Contumere, I crack Contumere, I get diarrhea. Don't know why. When I take Contumere from Kumasi, I don't get diarrhea. So I don't take, I don't buy, I don't buy Contumere stew in Accra here. I have diarrhea for one week, just once. I had diarrhea for one week. Stomach pain. I can eat contumely for Kumasi. Because I was born at Sanji, I don't know. Asante region, I don't know. For, for one year, it doesn't do anything to me. So you see, you have your preferences, and it's your choice. It's your choice. And you, you must learn to know what is good for you and what is not good for you. You must learn to know that sinners cannot be your friends. You must learn to understand that you cannot go to places where sin is practiced. 
and you cannot live enjoying sin. I know. I know that of all the soups, my best one is what? Chicken lye soup. I know it. I know it. So when I see chicken lye soup, I go wild. I don't like lye soup. It's just pepper and water. What do you call lye soup? It's pepper and water. Praise the Lord. So you must know. And as time goes on, it becomes part and parcel of you. There are some things that you, you can't even stand. And there are some things that you, you love. So external behavior determines to tell you whether you are in love with the world or not. But you see, there's something that you need to know. Though we are scattered in the world, doesn't matter where you are, where you live, remember that you are not part of that world. The world system, the world, is nothing but the last of the eyes, the last of the flesh, and the pride of life. These are the things that make up the world that we must run, flee from. Because we are not of that world. We are not part of that world. Jesus himself said it. Go with me to the book of John chapter 17, John's Gospel. This time, John's Gospel. Chapter 17. Let's see, 14 to 16. John's Gospel. 17. Verses 14, 15, and 16. This is Jesus speaking or praying. Praying to the Father for the disciples. He said, I have given them your word. The same way as I'm giving you his word now. I have given them your word. And the world has hated them because they are not of the world. Just as I am not of the world. The world hates you. How can you love the world that hates you if you have the word of God in you? If you only have the word of God in you, <laughs> you cannot love the world that hates you. So today know that the world hates you. Verse 15. I do not pray that you should take them out of the world but that you should keep them from the evil one. Because, see, in the world is the evil one. So Jesus is saying, Father, I'm not saying you should take your children out of the world. No, don't isolate them. Let them be in the world. <laughs> but protect them. Keep them from the evil one. Shield them from the evil one. Then verse 16. They are not of the world. Just as I am not of the world. You and I, beloved, we are not of the world. Anyone who thinks, says a believer and is of the world will fade away. Eventually, you, you will get tired. The world will just swallow you up. The world will just chew you up. Then you fade away. Many fade away. This Jesus himself praying to the Father for the disciples. Praying to the Father for the disciples before he departed. The thing is that, child, listen carefully, the thing is that love, the love of the world begins from inside. It is what is in you that will make you love the world. Hello? Let me say it again. It is what is in your heart, your heart, what is in you, what is within you that will make you love the world. There's no way I will, I will go near Kontomre in Accra. But I know that is dangerous for me. So anybody who brings me Kontomre, I say, where do, you, where do you get the Kontomre from? If it's Accra, I won't touch it. Doesn't matter how sweet, how palatable. You know, palatable than that palate, you know, palate, a hard palate. It, it's, when it gets into your mouth, it's so sweet. Doesn't matter. 
I won't go in there. I know that as nice and sweet as it is, it's a it danger of my health. So I won't touch it. But you bring me chicken last week from anywhere, from Tamale, from Bolivar, I'll eat it. And you do anything to me. So you must know. You must know the things that are harmful to you, things that are dangerous for you. Because, see, love for the world begins from inside. If deep down you love something, you have a desire for it. You are craving for it. When it is thrown at you, you will catch it. You will catch it. Matthew 15. Matthew's Gospel, chapter 15, verses 15 to 20. Jesus said this very, very beautifully. Very, very, very explicitly. Clearly. Matthew chapter 15, verses 15 to 20. Matthew 15, verse 15. Then Peter answered and said to him, Matthew 15, verse 15. Then Peter answered and said to him, Explain this parable to us. So Jesus said, Are you also still without understanding? <laughs> Are you also still without understanding? In fact, um, and let's go on. <laughs> Do you not yet understand that Whatever enters the mouth goes into the stomach and is eliminated. But those things which proceed out of the mouth come from the heart and they defile a man. They defile a man. For out of the heart proceed evil thoughts, murders, adulteries, Fornications, thefts, false witness, blasphemies. These are the things which defile a man. But to eat with unwashed hands does not defile a man. Jesus is saying here, those days that you know, they were so concerned about you know, ritual, rituals. How to wash your hands, do it before you do that, you know. Uh, you don't do this, do this, you know. He said, no, no, these are, and if you don't wash your hands before you eat, you have defiled your body, defiled your, your I said, you know. He said, no, no, these things are not the things that defile a person. Uh, eating with unwashed hands does not defile you spiritually. <laughs> eating with your hands not washed. Because what you eat, he said, what you eat, goes into your stomach. And from the stomach, it is eliminated. It doesn't stay inside of you. It goes in and comes out. It's gone. It is not what you wear that defies you. It is not by wearing nice clothes, beautiful clothes, that will make you holy. Therefore, if you have one dress, you don't say, I've worn this dress too often, so I Unless I get a new one, I won't go to church. No. It's not a dress you wear that will defy you. It is not your chalewate that will defy you. Your slippers. It's not your cheap shoes that will defy you. No. But it's the things that are within you. What is inside of you that come out. And these are the things that are defiling you. So he said, the things that are in the heart, in your spirit, the things that are within, in your inner man, in your soul, your soul, your inner man, the way you are, that is, the way you are, how you are, what you are. And That's what defies you. Not because you came to church, there was no water in your area, so you didn't have a bath. That doesn't defy you. Even if you haven't brushed your teeth this morning, it doesn't defy you. But it is what is within you. What is within you. And that's why God looks at the heart. And not at the outward appearance. God looks at the heart, not at the outward appearance. So, he said, 
The things, the things that proceed out of him are called out of the heart proceed if all kinds of evil thoughts, all kinds of evil thoughts. Mm. Murders. Evil thoughts, murders, adulteries, fornications, thefts, false witness, blasphemies. These are things we defile a man. But to eat with unwashed hands does not defile a man. The lust of the flesh, which belong to the world, this is the craving, cravings, or craving of sinful man. Man in a sinful state. Man in his unregenerated, unchanged state, unrepentant state. Craving to gratify the physical desires of man. When we say the last of the flesh, this is how serious it is. A, it is a craving. Craving means that you are driven because the thing is in you, you are driven towards it. You are propelled. You are pushed towards it. You, you. Many years ago, when we were in Bible school, we had to cancel. A certain young man, which wasn't that young, but about 48. And she says she's falling in love with a 25-year-old man. And the young man had not fallen in love with her. But she had fallen in love with him. So, to begin with, out of that craving, she spent almost all her money cooking for this young man. An opa, tea, bread, fried egg, butter, margarine, uh, what? Cooking, you know. Afternoon also. Afternoon, dear Bempo. Evening. So when the young man has eaten away all her money, that's when she made her intentions known. The young man said, oh, but I'm not, I thought you were just being nice to me. How can a woman be nice to you and me? The morning, three times a day, cooking, you are eating, 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 and she's just being nice to you. So the matter came to me for counseling. And the young, young man said, he's not interested. So he told the woman, the man said, he doesn't love you. Just forget and move on. He said, no, but I can't help myself. I just, I just cannot help myself. I love my, I, can, I can't help it. And today, also on power by force. And everything we said here, I, that I just cannot help myself. What, what can you not help yourself to? I can't help myself. She has been so consumed with this lust. This is not love. It's lust. That her sinful nature was now craving to satisfy maybe her flesh. Her flesh. That is the last of the flesh. Last of the flesh. Let me say it again. It is the cravings of sinful man to gratify the physical desires of man. When it comes to the last of the eyes, Lust of the eyes. And these things belong to the world. Not the world. Remember, you are not of the world. The lust of the eyes. It is the craving and ungodly accumulation of things by the worship of God of materialism. Let me break it down to simpler English. The last of the eyes. Anything you see, nice thing you want it. You are craving for every, every nice thing you want it. This year, what? 
they, they have what? What do you call them? Uh, the mobile phone. This year, uh, uh, four years ago, is Samsung S20 Plus. You bought it. The following year, Samsung S21 Plus. Because of some small difference in the, uh, the, the cover, so you, 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 you bought it for, thousand, for about 8,000 pounds. Uh, what? Well, the CDs, you bought it. Next year, S22, you bought it. Last year, I bought S20. Because my last phone was Samsung S10, 10 years, 13 years ago. And it was working well. So why should I change it? Samsung S10 Plus, I liked it. 2010, 11 came. So what? 2012, go. Then we came to 23, then 29. Samsung said, oh, the S10, they are, they are beginning to face it off. So I had to go and buy the S23, thinking that I have S23. And only this year, now we have S25. S24, I'll keep my S23 for the next 30 years before I change it. Hello? Cars, buildings, dresses, fashion, shoes. Some of you, women, we don't like shoes, but I know some of you women, ladies, some of you have more than 200 pairs of shoes. Some high heels, some medium, medium height, short height, whatever. Some are what? Um, I don't know what. I see that shoes. Should, every day, some of you change your shoes. When I'm ministering, I'm looking at your feet. I'm not looking at you. I'm looking at your shoes. <laughs> <laughs> Praise the Lord. It is a craving of sinful man to accumulate, to pile up. Pile up things by worshiping the God of materialism. Materialism. There's a God in charge of materialism. Beyond your means. Beyond your means. Therefore, you go into poverty because you're spending money doing something that you... you, you, are, you so where will, it, where will it all end? Where will it end? That is the last of the eyes. Lust of the eyes. And the thing that goes there, I don't, I don't have time to mention today, because when you, when you have that, you begin to look down upon those who don't have it. And the pride of life, pride of life, this belongs to the world. This is the obsession. You are obsessed with sinful status, importance. Your status is very, very important to you. Your importance, how important you, you it's very, very, how important you are, it's very, very important to you. Your status. <laughs> and you even boast about it. You want to boast about it. You boast about what you are, who you are, and what you do. You, are, you, you, you take pride in who you are, what you are, and what you do. And if somebody does not acknowledge you, you get offended. You get offended. You get seriously offended. Hello? Praise the Lord. There are some doctors in the world. If you make a mistake, he's a doctor, you go and call him Mr. They are in trouble. Me Mr. Me a doctor. Me a professor. Ghana is not very common. I know that in some parts of the world, you know, Ghana, once you're a doctor, you're a doctor. But in some parts of the world, some people have accumulated five, five doctorate degrees. Five. And therefore, against their name, they write Dr. 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 Henshaw. I know one who are called Dr. Henshaw. He writes the doctor, all the doctors fight, so that you know that he has five PADs. Doctor, 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 Henshaw. Some of them will write, Doctor, Professor, Chief. 
Yeah, it's not common. When you, when you go to um, Nigeria, Mutala Muhammad Airport, Nigeria, if you've been there before, when you, you are at the airport, you know the public announcements, when they're announcing, make announcements, everyone has a title. If you don't have a title, don't go there. So that's where, when I, when I used to listen, Professor, Doctor, Doctor, so, so, C, so, 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 Professor, Doctor, Doctor, so, so, and so, C, Chief, Doctor, so, so, and so, everybody has a title in Nigeria. <laughs> If you don't have a title, don't go near the public address system. Chief Doctor, Mrs. So so and so, C Professor, Doctor, Chief, so so and so. That is all. If like one day take a trip to Nigeria, just wait at the uh, airport and then come back. Listen, you understand what I'm trying to say. Pride of life. Pride of life. This belongs to the world. You see, and when you get to that point, beloved, even to marry becomes a problem. Because the man who is handsome, God has made the man handsome. God has made him wise, humble. The man falls in love with you, wants to marry you, you look at him like this. Hello? You look at his head, his forehead, look at his nose, the shirt he's wearing, trousers, shoes. Down. If you knock with me, ask me, take off your shoes, let me look at your feet. Before I even go and think about it, let me see your toes. Let me see the socks you are wearing. <laughs> what work do you do? What is your qualification? What where do you do? What is your income? Where do you live? Do you live in a, in a poor neighborhood or you live in a rich neighborhood? Uh, who are your friends? Is the IGP your friend? Is the Chief Justice your friend? Is the, um, uh, you know, and then you, you, you rubbish him. You rubbish her. The years are passing by. Years are passing by until you are 55, 60 years old. At that time, the dog, the dog comes. You look at the dog. Oh, this dog is a very, very beautiful dog. I will marry the dog. You end up marrying a dog. <laughs> the dog comes. At that time, you are at the breaking point, so even you are ready to marry even a dog. Hello? Pride of life. There's something I call combined status. I call combined status. When you combine your status, maybe you are high up there. Your spouse, beautiful young lady, Spirit-filled, God-loving, and maybe it's not as high as you are. But when you come together, you combine. Because you become husband and wife, you, you, you are joined together. Then there's a, a race. There's a race. Say you, the man, maybe you earn 30,000 CDs a month because of your position. But the woman you want to marry is earning 500 or even 400 CDs a month. When you combine your salary, is it not 34,000 CDs? Yes. Or 30,400. For the two of you. Is that, do you agree with me? Yes. And that's how you should look at Don't look at, oh, who pay us 400. Now they would be buy many so. Many so, 400 so. 400 a year then. Now when you combine your salaries, it's 30,400. Now when you divide it by two, it's 15,200 each. It's enough for you and not for her. Hello? And you're going to have beautiful children. Wonderful children. That's the way I look at it. Pride of life. Pride is worrying people. Lust of the flesh is driving people to, to hell. Lust of the eyes. And therefore, John wrote to them. He said, 
Now you are scattered. This is the world in which you are. This is where you are. Be careful. Let me remind you, let me counsel you that don't love the world. Don't love the world. Anything that is in it. Because the world, this world is passing away. It's going. This world is passing away. Don't say that, oh, I came into the world and during my lifetime, the world is still there. But at least, when you, when you leave, the world has passed away for you. Your departure means the passing away of the world. But the world will pass away. And in it, with it, all that is in it, everything needs to pass away. But, John ends by saying that he, he who does the will of God abides forever. He, imagine the world passing away, but you alone, by doing the will of God, you will still stand. And may we all in FCAC abide forever. Amen. So church, take note. Take note. Yes, we are in the world. But we are not of the world. And every day, we are bombarded by things of the world more than the things of God. You only come to church twice a week. As soon as you leave here, you are in the world. Every day, every minute, you are, we are in the world. We are meeting people who are, who are in the world. Temptation to go to places where sins are practiced. What do you do? Remember this advice from God for you and for me. And if you're able to stand, overcome, and do the will of God, you shall abide forever. In Jesus' name, amen.